Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today in gaming, a tactical FPS has lost its publisher. 50,000 Warzone cheaters were banned, Ubisoft employees are leaving the studio, and much more. And before we get into those stories, I've got a quick word from today's sponsor. Now, if you're a PC gamer, chances are that you've done a few things to your computer to try and make it run video games better, more consistently, free up more of your system resources. I've done this on every single computer that I've owned, whether it was changing the startup applications, turning off unnecessary processes, or giving games CPU priority. But have you ever thought about actually using a browser for gamers? Now, I know what you're thinking. A web browser designed for gamers? What are you talking about? I promise you, this is the real deal. Opera GX is built from the ground up to ensure it never impacts your gaming experience. You can set bandwidth limits to prevent uploads or downloads from eating up your entire internet connection. You can also control how much of your CPU and RAM Opera GX is allowed to use. So no more dropping frames or out of matches because your browser randomly decided that it needed a whole bunch of your RAM. I'm using it and it's nice to have a browser built with gaming in mind and not the intention of taking over all of your system resources with gaming as an afterthought. Now on top of the ability to control what resources Opera GX uses, it also has direct integration with Discord and Twitch. It also has GX Corner, which is a one-stop destination for gaming news, deals, and more. Opera GX also has a forced dark mode to prevent you from getting flashbanged by websites that don't have dark mode. So if you're interested in getting the most consistent PC gaming experience possible, grab Opera GX using my download link below. It's available for free and does everything other web browsers do without the bloat or performance impact. Thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Early Access Tactical FPS Ready or Not was dropped by its publisher Team 17. The game just launched a few days ago and has been widely praised despite its alpha state. Many players praised the game's attention to detail and tactical gameplay. It mostly tasks players with eliminating hostiles while securing or detaining civilians. There's many parallels between Ready or Not and games like Rainbow Six Siege and the Legacy SWAT games. A developer working on the game recently confirmed that the game was getting a school-themed map. This drew widespread scrutiny from the media outlets and people on social media due to the prevalence of school shootings in America. And while it's unclear if the school-themed map was intended to have players handling an active school shoot shooting scenario, the mere suggestion of such a scenario was enough to bother the publisher. The game studio Void Interactive released a statement on Twitter saying that they had reached a mutual agreement with Team 17 to continue development without the publisher. Based on the game's positive coverage and healthy player population, it doesn't seem like being dropped by Team 17 will significantly impact the game's future. The developers released a statement last night confirming that the school map is coming to the game and that they take the subject matter very seriously. Obviously, the situation is controversial. Tactical shooters often tread the line between glorifying tragedies and authentically simulating combat without being disrespectful. Most players generally agree that few games tread to the wrong side of that line. Those that do, notably 2000 2015's hatred get ostracized by players, platforms, and the media. So we're curious to hear what you guys think. Does a game like Ready or Not offering a school-themed map seem like treading on the wrong side of that line? Is the online outrage warranted? Or do you think Team 17 were justified in dropping the title? Let us know in the comments. This week has been an absolutely wild ride for the Call of Duty franchise. The good news is 48,000 cheaters were banned yesterday in the first big ban wave since Activision implemented Warzone's new Ricochet anti-cheat solution. We've seen reports of rampant cheating in Warzone following its Vanguard integration, but it's still early days for Ricochet. Detection will likely improve over time, and it's clear the developers have no issue handing out bans. Now, Warzone's new holiday event introduced a hostile cramp campus NPC that attacks players leading matches. Many players feel that he's too disruptive and causes losses when players would have otherwise won a match. Raven acknowledged that Krampus might be a little too good at spreading his nasty brand of holiday cheer and has nerfed him. His health has been massively reduced and he no longer spawns after the fourth circle. He's still problematic for some players, but at least he's easier to deal with now. The more significant issue with Warzone and where things are taking a turn in today's Call of Duty coverage is that players are reporting a litany of technical problems. 
players are reporting updates for the game looping forever, preventing them from loading a match. Some Modern Warfare players are having issues installing the game. Crashing, freezing, and matchmaking bugs are also impacting the experience. Major bugs following big updates is nothing new for Warzone, but external factors are probably making the situation worse this time around. 12 QA developers who represent one third of Raven's QA team were laid off a couple of weeks ago, and since then, employees from across Activision Blizzard have been striking, including 40 QA testers. None of their demands have been met or acknowledged by the company as of yet. Thankfully, it's not all doom and gloom for Call of Duty. Black Ops developer Treyarch released a statement authored by women at the studio acknowledging the company's dark history with workplace harassment and promising change is coming. A recent report by the Wall Street Journal exposed Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick intervening to prevent a senior executive at Treyarch from being fired after being accused of sexually assaulting a female employee. Treyarch's statement is one of the first of any company under the Activision Blizzard umbrella acknowledging that they have real issues with workplace harassment and need to do better. Ubisoft's recent foray into NFTs might have been the final straw for employees frustrated by the company's leadership. Nearly 20 of the studio's top employees have recently left the company following the release of major projects like Far Cry 6 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And while these sorts of high-profile departures are typical in this industry, the reason that they're leaving isn't limited to the usual stuff like finishing a big project or wanting to pursue new opportunities. Reports suggest that the company is suffering an exodus of employees over low pay, Ubisoft creative direction, and and lack of action on workplace harassment issues. Ubisoft recently unveiled their NFT platform, Ubisoft Quartz. The reaction was incredibly negative. Employees questioned the platform and players on social media have been very critical. Despite the adverse reaction, Ubisoft CEO said they'll continue developing Quartz and NFTs for it. Video game holding company Embracer Group announced some major acquisitions. They purchased publisher Perfect World and Dark Horse Comics among a handful of lesser known companies. Companies. Embracer has been on a buying spree this year. They bought Borderlands developer Gearbox Interactive, Aspire Media, 3D Realms, and many more. And that's on top of major acquisitions last year like Flying Wild Hog, 4A Games, and Insurgency Sandstorm Devs New World Interactive. These acquisitions combined position Embracer as one of the bigger publishers in gaming. Rockstar are offering PC players who own the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy a free game. The GTA Trilogy includes remasters of GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. It launched with major bugs on top of being a wild departure from the look of the original games. The free games that Rockstar is offering are Bully, GTA 4, GTA 5, LA Noir, and Max Payne. All you have to do to claim your choice of these games is to log into your Rockstar Social Club account. Players have found a temporary solution to the technical problems with Final Fantasy VII's remake on PC. Setting the game to run in DirectX 11 instead of its default DirectX 12 apparently alleviates many of the stuttering and poor performance issues plaguing the game. Doing this disables HDR support and it doesn't fix all of the game's problems, but it's still better than nothing. Hopefully the game's developers will update it quickly to sort things out. Halo Infinite's Winter Contingency event is live. It's free for all players and will be active until January 4th. Playing one match per day will unlock 10 tiers of rewards. So all you have to do is log in daily, play one match, and you'll unlock everything. This is a big departure from the game's previous Tenrai event, which forced players to complete specific challenges to unlock rewards. Valve's upcoming portable console, the Steam Deck, now works with 80 of Steam's top 100 games. The Steam Deck runs Linux, which poses a challenge for Windows-only titles and anti-cheat solutions. Valve announced a commitment to getting as many games working on the Steam Deck as possible. They have a page on Steam dedicated to Steam Deck compatibility and are working with developers to ensure easy integration with Linux. Valve made a massive push for gaming on Linux with Proton. It's a translation layer for Windows titles that lets them run on Linux with nearly native performance and minimal intervention from developers. But there's currently no workarounds for running Windows-only anti-cheat solutions on Linux. Anti-cheat software providers like Easy Anti-Cheat have committed to supporting Steam Deck and release plugins that make the process very easy for developers. 
Before we get to our final story today, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in for this past year's worth of content. Videos will be light over the holiday break, but we'll have plenty of Battlefield and gaming news coverage in the new year. Make sure you guys are subscribed to catch everything, have a happy holiday, and I'll probably see you here or there maybe with some live streams over the break. Battlefield 2042 has a new featured portal experience. 2042 TDM with 32 players on 1942, Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, and 2042 maps. This is particularly nice as it should be one of the first ways that TDM fans can unlock weapons and get XP. The third weekly mission is also live. The reward is the Naval Diffuse skin for the M5C Bolt. Unlocking it requires earning 15 ribbons, killing 60 enemies, or reviving 60 teammates, and resupplying 40 teammates with ammo. Last week's challenge included arming or disarming objectives in Rush, which some players didn't like since it forced them to play a specific mode. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good holiday break, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.